Hello, hello everyone uh, and welcome to another of uh, our Friday webcasts. My name is Dave Whiteley, I'm Technical Director of Envisage UK Limited and this particular webcast is entitled Autodesk Showcase 2013. I'll be going through um, taking models from Inventor into Showcase, uh, other models into Showcase and how we use Showcase for uh, high quality renderings and animations of our 3D designs. First of all, you may want to do a screen grab of uh, the shortcut keys. We use these particular keys all the time in Showcase. Um, it's key driven. You can use it from a pull down menu as well, but I tend to, and most people who've used Showcase for a while, tend to use the shortcut keys. Uh, the ones in red are um, keys that we use to create um, animations, behaviours and alternatives which I'll go through later on. Once we've got these um, shots, movements, behaviours, alternatives created and saved within Showcase, we can then put everything into a storyboard. Um, think of storyboard as producing your own movie where you can decide how long it's going to be, where these um, behaviours and alternatives and shots actually happen and you can create your own storyboard of a complete animation that then you can output to um, uh, YouTube, uh, your internet site or a, a movie file um, for a presentation to uh, customers and clients. First thing I want to do is uh, show you um, a video uh, first. It's a very short one. It shows us the new workflow uh, options that we have available to us in Inventor for sending our models through to Showcase. Uh, there are a number of options and one of those I'm going to show you now is how we can take uh, an Inventor model that's got driven constraints in it and take those constraints and put that out to uh, Showcase as a behavior so that we don't have to create our own uh, or create another um, a constraint movement within Showcase. It's, it transfers everything across from Inventor so that uh, the time and effort you've spent on adding constraints to Inventor aren't lost in the Showcase animations. So here we are, we've got a, an assembly of part of an earth moving vehicle and I'm driving uh, the constraints uh, on this uh, bucket mechanism. Now if we go to the suite workflows that are new in 2013, we're able to select the constraint or constraints that we want to send across to Showcase. This will then start Showcase and transfer the model through to um, Showcase. We can then choose different alternatives and materials which I'll be going through later. But we can then um, go to the behaviours within Showcase and drive and play this behaviour and you'll notice that the animation or the driven constraints that we created in, Ve in Inventor come through to the showcase model. Okay, so to that end, I'll just go into showcase and we'll take it from there. Now, when you import a model into showcase, you may get uh, the model imported 90 degrees out of the required orientation that you would have expected in your CAD system. Um, this happens sometimes, we can see it here on this uh, bucket mechanism. And I'll just show you first how you can change this, it's very simple, but it's just a few keystrokes. And then we'll uh, take this further and start playing with the assembly in, within Showcase. So um, you need to get the import status window up, which is I on the keyboard. And in here you'll see the uh, conversion status or statuses of all the models that have come through to the showcase uh, model. In this case, it's showing the uh, inventor assembly, the source units, and that it's been converted. This is where you would go, by the way, to uh, replace the assembly or update the assembly should it, should it have changed in the inventor. If I right click on this line here and go to the 3D model properties, then you'll notice we've got an original app axis option here. If I change this to plus Y and then close these down, you'll notice then it reorientates the model in the correct orientation that we'd expect to see in Showcase. 
Okay, so new in Showcase 2013, we now have a new user interface at the bottom of the screen here. This enables us to um, access the common commands that we would have used from the pull down menu. So in here I can open a file, I can change my lighting environments, I can change my lighting, I can change the visual styles, I can, ch I can create shots, and then I can publish it out to uh, whatever media I require. And we, we tend to work from left to right in this. So for instance, if I go to the lighting environments and background, it will show me a selection of environments that are suitable for this size of assembly. I can go to my library on the right hand side to choose more should I wish. So let's change this to say the photo studio. This will take in the, this will import the environment uh, complete with lighting and shadows and so on and so forth into the assembly. You'll notice we've now got a floor. Um, the, uh, the model is at the correct height. If it isn't, then we need to adjust this. Now, if you need to go back to the, the um, old pull down menus, there is an arrow at the top that gives you these. And then I can go to edit and set environment floor position and then just click on move to bottom of 3D model and this will move the environment to the bottom of the model. When you change the environment or move the environment, it's always the environment that moves in relationship to the model and not the other way around. Okay, the next we can adjust the lighting. Very simply, we can adjust the overall brightness of our scene. And we can also change the lights and shadows. So if I go to the light, for instance, all I've got to do is with my left mouse button, drag on the floor. And as you can see, adjust the lighting position. Likewise with shadows, we can adjust the shadows. As you can see, one does the same as the other. So it's up to you which one you use. Then we can go to our visual styles. Now in here, um, the default you get is hardware rendering. But first of all, what I want to do is show you what the ambient shadows are all about in these um, scenes. If I click on ambient shadows in the visual styles, what this will actually do is show me the, the ambient shadows. In other words, the shadows of parts within other parts of my assembly that have been created um, automatically as we've imported the model. You don't have to do any more to this. You can change them should you wish, but to be honest, um, you might as well use the, the, the pre the, the, the predefined uh, ambient shadows that are produced on the model. Then the two options we've got is, is the hardware um, rendering of the uh, scene, or we can do ray tracing. The ray tracing takes this a step further. It's just, it it uh, enables you to actually do um, reflectivity of parts within other parts of your design, which you wouldn't get with hardware shading. Now the thing is the ray tracing, you will get a pixelation to start off with. This is normal. And the pixelation decreases as the quality of the uh, ray tracing um, image improves. But do not move the model whilst the ray tracing is taking place because it will restart the ray tracing. I'm just going to go to settings for this. And um, we'll just change this to... Uh, let's look at this dialog box. Um, this enables me to actually produce a faster or slower, i.e. better quality, inter, uh, ray trace. It also lets me refine how many render levels or how, for how many minutes I want this ray trace to run. Obviously, the more render levels, the more minutes, the better quality the ray tracing will be. Um, this, will give, this will be shown on a, a progress bar here. Um, and the pixelation decreases and decreases as it creates the ray traced image but you will get a very, very good quality image, especially if you're using reflectivity in any materials. But this is for single image only. So if you uh, want to start doing any animations, then you go back to the uh, hardware shading and rendering, which is done on the graphics card. So that's the ray tracing nearly uh, completed. So we'll just go back to our hardware rendering. And we'll move on to look. Now the look area here, um, first of all, it will show any pre, these are called shots, by the way, and it will show us uh, any predefined shots that we may have had created by the inventor translation. So I've got one that's been created called track left. A shot that's been created at three quarter view. But I can create more. If I go to the shots button, this gives me the shots that have been created already. And if I go up to create, then we can create um, a still, 
cinematic or start to end style of shot. Um, the still shot is just simply choose a position, still image, duration that this is played for, and that's it. So that just gives us a still image. Uh, cinematic, there are different types of cinematic. Um, Orbit's a good one. Um, track left, track right, etc. Of, of, of shots that we can create. I'm going to go to start to end, which is one of my favourites. Um, and where what we do here is we actually it's better than the one I want. Um, what we do here is we actually choose. loads of shots here automatically for some reason let's just close this down and go back in again okay so what we do here is we we choose a start image or position click on reset start and then That's playing through my uh, images, my shots. Let's close this down. Okay. Reset the start position. I'm going to say that I want to fade from black into this shot. Give it a new end position. Click on reset end. You can choose how long, how many seconds it takes to fade from black into the shot. You can give it a duration. You can again click on preview, which shows you the shot that you've been produced. And if you want to, you can reset the end and so on. And then that gives you a shot that then we can use later on in our storyboard. You can create as many shots as you like. Uh, then finally, on this, we'll look at the materials. Now with the materials, I would suggest, if you can, use the showcase materials. They're better quality for um, high quality renderings than come from the CAD models. Uh, if I want to change the colours or the materials of this model, I just right click on part of it. I can then choose the objects with this particular material on the right mouse click. And then from my material library here, I can just choose what uh, colour I want to replace this with. Um, this can be quite useful if you want to show alternatives uh, to customers because Showcase lets you uh, produce alternatives. So what I'm going to do now is show you, um, first of all, what's been created from uh, Inventor from the Driven Constraints. So if we go to Behaviours, you notice you've got a constraint here that was produced from Inventor. And if I just play that and play it backwards, you'll see that we've actually got the driven constraint that's been converted from inventor into showcase okay um, there is something down here called triggers this is quite useful if you want to interactively show a design to a customer you may want to um, have some sort of surface on here that acts as a trigger to actually play this behavior so if i wanted to show the bucket up as a trigger and the bucket down as a trigger this is how you do it just going to create 3d trigger in fact Let's select a surface first. That surface on the bucket I'm going to use to trigger, trigger the movement upwards. So we then go to create 3D trigger. I can right click on this and set the image from what we see on the screen. And also we can rename this so I can call this, I don't know, just call it up. And then if I right click on this, the association, the trigger association will now be to the behavior and I'm going to play this forward from the start. So we'll just check this by right clicking and executing this. So that's the behavior to actually, or the trigger set up to drive the behavior upwards. I'll now select the other side of the bucket and create another trigger. And we'll rename this one to down. And we'll remember to associate this to a behavior, but this time play backward from the end execute that so we've now got a couple of triggers so now 
when we use the tab key to go into presentation mode, which, which stops us really being able to select surfaces and so on, it just really enables us to uh, view the image and show it to customers. But if I now click on the surface at the front of the bucket, that then, acts, that then clicks, uh, drives the trigger and likewise the surface on the bottom of the back bucket. So you can actually use triggers to actually trigger any form of animation or appearance change on your design uh, if you were showing this interactively to a customer. Let's have a look at alternatives. So if we just... Uh, I like to select everything visible first before I start working with alternatives. Press A for the alternative library. I'm going to create here a material lineup. So we'll click on the button to add a new one. That will take what I've got here and create me a new lineup with these particular materials. And if I deselect everything and then right click on the material, select the material, go back into the materials library, and we'll just choose the original yellow. And again, select all visible. Click on a next alternative, uh, next alternative for the material lineup, and then we've got some alternatives of different material lineups that we can choose to show either through a storyboard or to our customer interactively on the showcase. Another thing we can do is turn the visibility of parts on and off. So if we take this um, mud guard here, for instance, and select that, and I'm just going to hide it. In fact, let's show everything first. Select all that's visible. And we'll go to create uh, a visibility lineup and we'll add an alternative for everything on the screen. So that's everything showing for the moment. Now I'll hide the mud guard. Select everything that's visible. Make another alternative for the visibility lineup. And now as I click on these, we've got visibility lineups. So if you wanted to show an alternative uh, part or an assembly on your design, you can turn things on and off. And as long as you just show everything that's visible, you can make yourself as many alternatives as you wish within Showcase. So material lineups and visibility lineups. So now we've got some shots, we've got some alternatives, we've got some behaviours. We can now put all this together in a storyboard. So uh, we go up to story, storyboard or you on the uh, keyboard and we'll create a blank storyboard slide. This is an empty slide. We right click on alternatives, shots, etc. to add them to this storyboard slide. You'll notice this is called slide one and it's lasting for three seconds at the moment. If we go to the properties of this, we can change this. So, um, I don't know, presentation one. Well, this will be for 10 seconds. And then we just need to go to everything and just drag, in, drag these in. So if I go to the behaviours, for instance, and put the uh, drive constraint for uh, moving the bucket up and down into there. So if you just right click on that. Add to current storyboard slide. Play forward from the start. But I could also add this to the current storyboard slide and play backward from the end. We'll go to the alternatives. And we'll add uh, an alternative for yellow, an alternative to green, and that'll do for now. Let's take these off. And if we go and have a look at the, uh, just to set the image for the uh, presentation slide, go to its properties, you'll now notice that what we've got here is a timeline. And on this timeline, we can change or move where certain things happen just by dragging these around. Let's just reduce, reduce this to six seconds. Okay, that'll do. And then if we play this slide, this will then play the presentation. Go through moving the components around the assembly around and go through any, any alternatives. But of course, there's no uh, movement here. So we go into shots and we add shots to the storyboard slide 
go back to the properties, we can then move shots around. Because the shots are of a certain length, it's actually pushed the length of my, because these are five seconds each, it's pushed the length of the presentation up to 10 seconds, which makes sense. So then you can start pushing everything together and making a storyboard. Once you've created this, this is what you would push out to your animation. Um, and we do this by finally going to the publish button on the bottom of the new UI. And in here, we can push this out to a single image, uh, a movie. The movie options are that we can now put this to various image uh, video formats to whatever resolution we want. We can push this out to YouTube, publish straight to YouTube, and we can publish to the web. You can only publish to the web from a storyboard slide. You can't publish to the web from, say, a shot and this will enable you to publish out either locally or should you wish locally into the cloud if you're on subscription with autodesk you have 25 gigabytes of cloud storage and you can actually push this uh, video up to the cloud this goes out in html5 format and then this can be embedded into websites if you want to show animations on your website so that's uh, a run through of showcase uh, thank you very much for attending and uh, I look forward to speaking to you again in the next webcast. Thank you very much.